Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Tim Dillon Show. I'm very happy that Matthew Perry finally getting exposed uh, as a uh, abuser of people, of women, and uh, because I don't want to see him in any more projects. I'm done. The Daily Mail ran an expose <laughs> the other day on Matthew Perry. Fought your canceled, buddy. You're done. <laughs> I don't want to see Matthew Perry in anything. And they finally had the guts to run an expose on Matthew Perry. They were like, hey, you've gotten away with it for too long. He was very cruel. Matthew Perry assaulted women, including his ex fiance Friends actor hurled a table at Molly Hurwitz after she confronted him about cheating. And threw a his live-in sober companion against the wall. Well, fuck that shit. I don't want to see him in anything. That's, I'm telling you. I, I will not, if I see Matthew Perry in anything, Netflix, HBO, Apple, Amazon, after this article came out, which is dated t uh, January 10th, 2024, <laughs> After this article about Matthew Perry, I do not want to see him in anything else. I will not watch it. I cannot separate the art from the artist anymore. <laughs> so I think he better stay in his house and it probably is a hot tub and he should stay there. Just stay in your hot tub, sir. You're not allowed in front of my eyes anymore. I love this, by the way, I love going, there's something so great about going after the dead. <laughs> there's so, really, he, this guy's a junkie who the last few years of his life were terrible and he died and absolutely no one revered this man. Everyone, when he died, was like, yeah, he, he had a rough go of it. The best thing that was said about this guy was Lisa Kudrow going, I might adopt his dog. That was the best, that was the closest anyone got to sing anything nice about, I didn't see really anything nice being said. He was a junkie. He had a rough go of it, and he died. And then the Daily Mail had to go and dig. They had to go and dig. Can you imagine being the writer of that piece who had to call up everybody and go, Hi, I'm writing an article about Matthew Perry. You want to go on record? I'm writing an article about Matthew Perry. Yeah, 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 the one they just put in the ground. <laughs> I want to expose him. I'm happy that the Clintons are on vacation. I'm always happy that people, people that need to get away. I'm always happy when people get, when my friends call me and they go, I'm on vacation, I'm happy for them. I go, good, good. People work so fucking hard. If you have the time, get away. If you have the time. If you have the money, if you can do it, get away. Get a, get away. Get out of there. Bill Clinton went down to Mexico. He went to a luxury resort. The governor of California, also another hard worker. What is the deficit? $68 billion? Mm -hmm. We're in $68 billion in the hole. Stressful. Uh... So the president of the the ex president of the United States, Bill Clinton, and Gavin Newsom went down to Mexico to hang out. Um, they went to a cool resort, and this was like uh, you know because the president had a rough week with the Epstein docs coming out, and you know Bill Clinton's old now. He's been he's been like a vegan for a while. He's not. I don't know how good his heart's doing. He's not out there. Fucking the way he used to be. He's not on the prowl. This was a man who was on the prowl <laughs> for the majority of his life. It was what pushed him forward. He became a governor and, and the president because he wanted to fuck. And he can't do it. And all this information has just come out. And he's at the end of his life. How old is this guy? Uh, Clinton has got to be. He's old, this guy. He does not look great. Mm -hmm. He does not look great. Hillary is up there. They're old. I remember when they were like young and 
He's 77, Clinton. Yeah. Hillary is 76. George W. Bush, 77. I grew up with these people. I grew up with this gang. President Clinton, you know, you know, he had some, you know, he's ta- he had he took a couple of L's last week. But he looks he looks happy. There's one thing about it, you know, people that are in the closet when they're out of the closet are happier usually. People that are you know, are have a secret are a lot happier when the secret is out. There's kind of a weight that has lifted off them, and they just go, yeah, it is what it is, you know? And I think the Epstein docs for him were kind of like, so what? Now it's out. Now it's out. Do your worst. I'm 77 years old. Do your worst. So what? I went to a pedophile island, you know? And and I and I palled around with a guy who trafficked young girls, and I probably had sex with many many of them, and maybe some of them got killed. <laughs> but on the flip side, I reformed welfare. I did that. Remember the jobs. Remember the jobs. They were good, you know. So it's I mean he he's basically like it's a mixed bag. And Gavin Newsom, right after the ex-president is, you know, implicated in all this Epstein shit, Gavin Newsom decides, um, let's go. Because Gavin Newsom likes fun. He likes fun. It's a, it's a, it's a quick private jet ride down to Mexico. He, he's him and his wife, uh, Jennifer Sybil Newsom, who, by the way, testified in the Harvey Weinstein trial. Mm-hmm. Remember that? Yeah. And what and didn't she describe his penis? <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah, she did. So yeah. the, the Gavin Newsom's wife, the first lady of California, who who testified in the Harvey Weinstein trial and described Harvey Weinstein's penis, is now palling around with Bill Clinton, who was on the human traffickers jet 27 times and is mentioned 50 times in the deposition. So this, this is, here's what I mean by that. If you can't read between the lines there, uh, Newsom and his wife, like they don't, they're f- completely comfortable with sex offenders and, and people that have committed like egregious sexual crime. They have no problem. There's no, there's no, like, they're not like uncomfortable. I guarantee you they're not uncomfortable. Newsom's wife is not uncomfortable. She is having a ball. They're drinking. They're telling them how to be them. The Clintons are telling them, here's how to be us. Here's how you got to do it. Today's day and age. I would love to be a, a mortar and pestle of guacamole <laughs> sitting at the table, listening to this crime family give the last bit of wisdom. This is all they have left. They ju- At this age, the only thing they have left, they can't come anymore they they can't they don't have that much power right <laughs> they're they're just bags of dust the only thing they have left is to talk the only thing they've got is stories and they want people to listen to them this is everybody at that age once you get up into the octogenarian years when you're in your 80s you don't have anything left except to tell people tales because you know you're about to bite it and the only thing you have left is to tell those who are coming after you the things you've learned on your journey and Bill and Hillary Clinton, this is a kind of a, this is a big vacation Mm -hmm. historically. And people don't realize this people because the New York post is reporting it. And the New York post is something that, you know, most people don't respect and nor should they, Mm -hmm. even though I have friends there and, but the New York post And it's kind of a salacious tabloid story, right? They're like, look at Gavin Newsom hanging out with the human trafficker, you know. And and, 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 and sure, to that end, sure, report it. But this is the standard bearers of the Democratic Party, which is the Clintons, are telling Gavin Newsom and his wife how to become 
the new power couple because the Obamas can't, do, the Republican Party's in utter disarray, you, you, meaning that there's infighting in the Democratic Party as well, but bo- both political parties are fucked. The Republican Party, you have the Wall Street types, they, they want like Nikki Haley, you want, you have like, um, you know, the MAGA people for Trump. You know, I don't know. I don't know who's wants Vivek, but I guess people that are, <laughs> people on Reddit maybe. But this is the Clintons uh, telling the Newsoms, you know, and what a great dinner. Mm-hmm. Because, you know, there's some, it, Bill's really just saying, listen, I let it get away from me. This is, he's, you know, there's a beach walk with him and Gavin. There's a beach walk with him and Gavin, right? Because they're kind of a similar guy. Gavin's like a fuck boy. You know what I mean? He was married to that chick who's now dating Trump Jr. Mm -hmm. Kimberly Guilfoyle Newsom. Yeah. So Gavin's like kind of a pretty boy. He, uh, Bill, they speak the same language. Hillary does not speak the language of Harvey Weinstein's testifier testifying about the penis woman. Hillary doesn't speak her language because she's like a real wife. Hillary was never a real wife. Hillary's like a fucking, you know. Hillary is a, is, a, is a problem, and she wants her own thing. And this bitch, you know, so when her, when her and Hillary have to talk, Hillary's not really excited by that. She probably is. But Bill definitely does a beach walk with Gavin where he goes, hey, it got away from me. And just, you know, just, you know, you got to be careful out there because they, you know, it's not like it used to be. This is a different world now. Can you imagine just Bill Clinton, you know, at the end of it being like, hey, I mean, listen. And you know, like he definitely says to Gavin, like he goes, they're trying to say that I was like doing stuff on Epstein's Island. (laughs) And you, Gavin's got it like looks at him strangely. And Clinton's like, can you believe that? Like they're trying to tie me into that. And Gavin's like, I hey, these uh, Clint's like these QAnon types. They're trying to tie me in to this uh, Epstein stuff. I mean, that's how perverted these people are. It's how sick they are. And Gavin's kind of like, like going like, like you know, Gavin's face kind of like, yeah, no, it's they, these people, man. They'll just, I mean, they don't care about the truth at all. Bill's like, right? I, I mean, it's it's insane. <laughs> what they're doing and they're having a little beach walk and bill's bill's a really smart guy so bill bill's not out there like people think that bill's probably like and then i'll fuck this one and that one and then we drown one of them like he's not they're not doing that he's like setting it up so he's telling gavin like they're lying about me they're gonna lie about you this is what they do they lie and you have to get one step ahead of their lies. That's where the fun comes in. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's where the fun comes in. Because Bill's like, yeah, 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 you gotta get uh, you gotta go one step ahead of their lies because they're gonna they're gonna make up a bunch of shit about you. They made up a lot of stuff about me and Hillary. They never stop. Because the Clintons are boomers. So uh, they're the victims. The Clintons are there only to complain to Gavin and his wife about how badly they've been treated by the, the now, by the way. Much like boomers, they haven't been treated barely. They should have both, for what they've done, been hung. But nobody's done that to them. They're not in jail. Any other people that, you know, did the things they did would probably be in jail. They've actually been treated pretty fucking well, like most boomers. (laughs) But the Clintons are, at the very heart and soul of them, aggrieved uh, boomers who are telling Gavin Newsom and his wife who described Harvey Weinstein's egg penis. I can't stop saying that because it's funny. <laughs> or I forget, it's not an egg, but it, it's got gangrene, his gangrene penis. And and it, it, they're just complaining. The whole trip is there's some laughing and there's some, you know, keeping it light. But the whole trip is just the Clintons complaining about how, you know, how bad. And Hillary's like, and they went at me. They never stopped. From the minute I raised my head, I became the symbol of everything that they hated about women and about feminism. 
And, you know, Gavin and the wife are sitting there and they're having some tequila and drinking a Don Julio Blanco. And they're like, yeah, yeah, no, it's, we saw it. You guys were just, I mean, they, ne- I mean, they never, t- I mean, sure, Bill's not perfect, but they never stopped it. And it's annoying. It's annoying. You know, they're just, they, the Newsoms are sitting there, but they, but the Newsoms are sucking it all up because the Newsoms are like, how do we, how do we convince the uh, country that we're not going to, you know, fuck everybody over? How do we do that? How do we do that? And Newsom's not Clinton. Like, Clinton's really good, or he was really good. But it's got to, I would just love to be sitting there and listening it's 90% the Clintons complaining, 90%. But then there's going to be 10% like, here's what you got to do to get the things you want. And that would be the interesting stuff. Oh, yeah. Here's the people to talk to. These are the guys that have to like you. Here's the way it works. You know, you need a bigger war chest than you used to. You know, why do we really think Hillary lost? da 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 but a lot of it is uh, uh, just complaining. It's probably very boring. It's actually not, people think it's like sexy and lurid and cool and wow, it's, whoa, whoa what's it like? What it really is is just an old boomer couple complaining because they're just boomers, by the way. I mean, may, maybe he fucked a bunch of teenagers. He probably did. I would bet money that he did. And maybe she's like a lesbian or something. I don't know. She doesn't seem to love cock. But I don't know. So maybe they lived a lot. But how many boomers did that? Tons. Tons. They're just boomers. They just got involved in a bunch of shady deals. They're, they don't care about anyone but themselves. Their entire lives were about advancement. And now they've got nothing left except to bring... And, and Gavin and his wife are idiots. They're dumb people. They're stupid people. Gavin's an idiot. And his wife's an idiot and a whore. Seemingly, I don't know, and I mean, I hope none of, <laughs> nobody finds any of this disparaging. If anyone plays this for pe- people, play things sometimes for people. But uh, Gavin's an st- idiot, and his and his wife is kind of an idiot whore. Uh, from what I gather, I don't know them, but this is what I gather. And people that I know who know them, this is the what they believe. Gavin is a like a silver tongued, smooth talking person, but he has no depth. He's as deep as a puddle. He, there's nothing there. He's uh, incapable of uh, summoning any, he's really just like, and the way that he's been able to run California is because people here are stupider than they are in other places. So because he is good looking and presentable because the people here are dumb, they are unable to, uh, un- like they can't, under- like they look at him and they go, he- he's probably telling some kind of truth, but he's uh, an idiot. So, and Clinton's, they know that. They're looking at them and they're going like, like Hillary says in the hotel room, she's an idiot whore. She goes, she's a dumb whore. <laughs> I mean, she's she's dumb. And Bill goes, yeah, I don't know if he, I don't know if they have it. I don't know. And and Hillary's like, yeah, I just don't think they have it. And, and Bill goes, he's got potential. Bill goes, he's got, because Bill likes him. Because Bill likes him. Uh, for the same reason that uh, that Bill likes uh, anybody, he sees parts of himself in Gavin. He's a str- Gavin's a striver. He's a liar. He he's probably fucks a lot. Like Bill, Bill likes that. Bill goes, I think he's got potential. And then Hillary's like, Yeah, but you know, I worry about her. What would be great is if the Clintons decided to kill them, like if they just killed them, and then just that was it. Like, if the Clintons just decided to uh, poison Gavin Newsom, and his, for what, I, I don't know uh, even why they would do I recorded a Patreon episode years ago. It was called Bill and Hill's Last Kill about how there will be a time when they just have one more kill. That's it. There's, like, one more guy to get rid of. But they, there's no reason to kill these people here. But it would be fun. There'd be something beautiful and Shakespearean about Newsom and the wife going to get the secrets from the Clintons and the secrets going, and here's the biggest secret. And then Gavin and his wife are dead in the guacamole, poisoned. That would be great. Like the Clintons laid it out, told them how they did everything, told them everybody they made disappear, everything. They just, I mean, they just unburdened themselves. They're about to die. They completely unburdened themselves in this legendary dinner. 
And they're drinking fucking tequila and they're just, I mean, spilling their guts. Spilling it because they need to. And then they just poison Newsom and his wife and kill them there. And go, oh, we, we're glad we got that all uh, off our chest. But it's, it's not going to be that. That would be beautiful and Shakespearean and great. But it's not that. It's just, it's Clinton complaining. It's he's talking about the benefits of veganism. Like it's it just it's it's not what you think it is. It just kind of sucks. Like I was reading this article uh, article about Skull and Bones, and Skull and Bones sucks now. Skull and Bones used to be like, you know, the leaders of America. It's still that, but everyone sucks because the the they're they're doing like diversity, <laughs> equity, and inclusion in the uh, Illuminati <laughs> in Skull and Bones. Which is used to be just let's get a bunch of people that show that they can carry on uh, the tradition of being a sociopath. That's what Skull and Bones is about. Mm -hmm. It's like finding rich people that have a, a skill set that makes them look like maybe they, maybe hey, 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 maybe they can be sociopaths. And it's it's in, at Yale University. The CIA started. It was taken right out of Skull and Bones. Okay. So many uh, uh, bonesmen have risen to positions of prominence and power, the, you know, presidents, CEOs. We get it. A lot of white guys, a lot of white guys. They would jerk off in the coffins. It was very, like, Nazi. I think George W. Bush stole Geronimo's skull, and it was in the tomb, and there's all this secret shit in the tomb, and now it's like anno they're annoying now. Now it's like they're annoying. They literally in the Skull and Bones tomb like took down all the pictures of the old white guys because it's, it was not diverse. <laughs> Can you imagine getting into Skull and Bones, the most elite sanctum, and then going, God, this God, does this suck? I mean, it is like, and by the way, they don't take whites anymore. They're not taking a lot of white people. They take like only a few whites. They take a lot of minorities who are the first person in their family to go to college. This is what Skull and Bones is doing. The first generate, like, it's like, it's like, a, it's insane. Like someone that gets tapped. The way Skull and Bones works is when you're a junior at Yale or something, you get tapped or maybe, maybe it's seniors, seniors get tapped into it. What I don't know. I'm not in it. Okay. And, and that's not where the real power is anymore. The, the power is not in that. It's not these people at Yale anymore. And we'll go into who it is, but it's, they have some of it, but they're losing it all the time. They're losing it all the time. But you get tapped into this. And then you got to go through this initiation. And then you're in this thing, and it's all, it's all like people that are annoying now. Except they want all the benefits of that power structure. They want to get jobs. They want to make lots and lots of money. But they they want to like go like 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 fuck these colonizers. But they're in the thing. They're like in the thing. They just want to make. They're like we're gonna make this elite society of uh, rich people good. We're going to make it good. It's, 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 this is how stupid our political realities are at the moment. This is how, how th these kids' brains have been melted. They're in this inner sanctum. They call it a tomb. It's like a, the tombs, right? And they're, and they're there and they're going, we want to be elite, rich people that, cover each other's backs but we 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 want to like also we want to make it good we want to do it for the right reasons and it's like the most psychotic thing and by the way you read about all these other societies where they all go we're gonna give all the money back to new haven they don't do any of that they just hang out they're college kids they're all i don't care how smart you think you are you're an idiot when you're 18 you're an idiot you're all idiots you're all fucking stupid i don't give a fuck how smart you think you are you're an, you don't you know nothing of anything 
DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NFL playoffs, is bringing you an offer that'll help make the playoffs electrifying. New customers can bet five bucks on any game and get 200 instantly in bonus bets. I mean, that's great. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now and use code Tim Dillon. New customers can bet just five bucks to get 200 instantly in bonus bets. Only on DraftKings Sportsbook with code Tim Dillon. The crown is yours. Gambling problem. Call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit www.1800gambler.net. In New York, call 877-8-HOPE-NEW YORK or text HOPE NEW YORK 467-369. In Connecticut, help is available for problem gambling. Call 888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org. Please play responsibly. On behalf of Boot Hill Casino and Resort in Kansas, 21 plus age varies by jurisdiction. Void in Ontario. Bonus bets expire 168 hours after issuance. See dkng.com slash football for eligibility and deposit restrictions, terms, and responsible gaming resources. And I know you people are out there going like, yeah, 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 but they got into Yale, Tim, and you dropped out of Nassau Community College. Okay, yeah, but I'm in Santa Barbara a lot, aren't I, faggot? <laughs> So what happens to these people are at the peak of their idealism and, 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 and they're going into these old uh, institutions that are, yes, uh, of course they're racist and all the beists of it's this fucking skull and bone society. And all these people go in there and they all have this idea that they're going to be different. They're going to change it. They're going to use it for good. I'm using skull and bones for God but they all just become rich pricks. That's all it is. That's all Skull and Bones is. You just become rich prick. I don't care that you're you're a biracial, bisexual, non-bi, it doesn't matter. You'll be all of those things in addition to being a rich prick who's trying to get ahead based on the fact that you know other rich pricks is what it is. And I'm not saying, I'm not even hating on that. There's just such an insane, instead of just scrapping it, just scrap it. Just get rid of it. If you really don't like it, don't be in it. Say no. When they tap you, go, no, not for me. I'm going to do it on my own. But none of these scumbags want to do it on their own. You know, like people like, like me or Trish Paytas have done. <laughs> but none of these scumbags want to do it on their own. They all want the fucking benefits of being in this little cabal. But they just want the cabal to be arranged around the things that they think are more uh, altruistic and better things. It's so fucking stupid. Message me if you're in Skull and Bones, by the way. It's hilarious. <laughs> it's, it's not elite anymore. No one cares, you fucking losers. No one cares, you broke hoes. Nobody's skull, no fucking skull and bones people. Very few of them can afford shit. I talked to the biggest realtors in the country. None of you can buy shit. You, you, you get nothing. Some of them, a few of them. But a lot of them, they have nothing now. Mm. They have nothing. I'd rather join a Chinese secret society. My godson <laughs> will join a Chinese secret society, Okay. He will join fucking Scroll and Wonton or whatever they have. <laughs> he will not join this shit. Can you imagine? You're in the Skull and Bones tomb and these idiots start talking about a uh, fucking, you know, the, the fact that uh, they, they're, they're, they're mad that Angela Bassett didn't win the fucking, I mean, <laughs> Jesus Christ. Is anything, can't people just be evil anymore? Can't you just be, why do we have to get adjusted to a new kind of evil all the time? <laughs> Can't we just know what evil is and regard it when we see it and know how to avoid it or mitigate its effects? What is evil? Why is it so goddamn good at morphing all the time? All these sociopathic personality types constantly are, are rebranding themselves, so it's very hard to know what fucking evil is. It's amazing. It's like you'd think you would just get used to one type of fucking evil. Now it's like, you know, it, you know, it keeps morphing and changing. 
the skull and bones equity. Let's, 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 some of this article did make me laugh. This is written by somebody named Rose Horowitch. I feel like that's a fake name, Horowitch? One evening in 2019, in a windowless building known as the Tomb in the center of Yale's campus, the members of Skull and Bones snapped. There they were having, by the way, how hilarious is that the members of Skull and Bones snapped? Isn't this supposed to be a thing of like cool serpent-like people that are good under pressure, like when they pull Iran Contra or something, (laughs) they snapped? There they were having been granted membership to the most elite secret society at one of the most elite universities in the world. Part of a rare group that for generations included individuals from the most powerful Vander, uh, families on the planet, Vanderbilts, Rockefellers, da 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 da. Three bonesmen would go on to become the president. We know, we know, we know. But there in the tomb, surrounded by oil portraits of former bonesmen, all white, all chosen by the society's alumni board, the current members felt overcome, not by the achievements of those who had come before them or by the possibilities that lay ahead, but instead by the organization's long history of exclusion. <laughs> so there's, by the way, which is still going on, mm-hmm. the whole point of Skull and Bones, and by the way, these idiots go to Yale? Is there a refund department? The whole point of Skull and Bones is exclusion. That's the entire point. It's to exclude people. They just want them. They don't like the way they, the way that the exclusion was set up. But that's the whole point. So the students did what they felt had to be done. They pulled the portraits down and replaced them with homemade signs criticizing the secret society's record of keeping people of color out of its ranks. Can you... Picture this. You get into the skull and bone society. You're in the tomb. You're finally there. You're finally in the inner sanctum of power. And you're sitting there. And everybody goes, hey, can you give us a hand? And you go, well, what are we going to do? We, we, we got Coke or something? They go, no, 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 no. We're going we're gonna to take down the pictures of William F. Buckley. And then we're going to put up posters about how mad we are that uh, he was white. What? I thought we were going to do like a party with scroll and key. No. We got to do this. They pulled the portraits down and replaced them with homemade signs. Portraits is a relatively straightforward and easy ask, one member who participated in the redecoration told me. The way a space looks can have a large impact on a person's psyche. Can you imagine? These are the people they're now tapping. Give this country to China. Give it to China. (laughs) Give it to China. Give it to China. Give it to China. Can you imagine a member of the Skull and Bones being like, well, actually, the physical environment has a very big impact on someone's psyche, the way a place looks. Give it to China now. (laughs) Oh, my God. People are going to accuse me of being like some type of racist. This is not what I'm... I don't care who Skull and Bones has in it. I don't give a fuck if they have all blacks, all whites, all Hispanics. The whole point of a secret society is skullduggery. It's fuckery. It's exclusion. And any way you cut it, dummies, the real rebellious move would be to get rid of it. But none of you cunts want to do that because you want the benefits of being in this thing, but you want to just be annoying cunts. You cannot have it both ways. You cannot benefit from this network of fucking Illuminati freaks and then take their photos down, dummy. You should all be forced to go to Barry Weiss's University of Austin. That's where you should go. You go right to Barry Weiss now. That's what happens. If you're really about it, Skull and Bones, if Skull and Bones is really about it, fuck the Yale Rolodex, fuck all the fucking uh, alumni and the fucking uh, endowments and all the bullshit. You go right to Barry Weiss's University of Austin. That's where you go. And you do it on your own. Sick of these freaks. So many people are getting in car accidents and so many people are getting ripped off. You know why? Because they're not going to Morgan & Morgan. It's America's largest personal injury law firm. 35% of all fatal accidents occur between 6 p.m. and midnight. 
People age 25 to 34 have highest amount of drivers involved in car crashes. People age 15 to 24 had the highest rate of emergency room visits due to car accidents of all age groups. Okay? Morgan Morgan is America's largest injury law firm. You got to use them. With over $15 billion recovered for over 300,000 clients, Morgan & Morgan has a proven track record of fighting to get you full and fair compensation. They only make money if you win. Submitting an injury claim is so easy. Life is hard, but the injury claim that you submit is easy. The accident is the tough part. Getting in the accident. But the, the suing, if you have to do it, is easy. Because you have to hold people accountable. If you're ever injured, you can check out Morgan & Morgan. Their fee is free unless they win. For more information, go to forthepeople.com slash Tim or dial pound law, pound 529 from your cell phone. That's forthepeople.com slash Tim or pound law, pound 529 from your cell. This is a paid advertisement. Everybody asks me to come and stay in my house. They go, we love these mattresses. What are they? And I go, they're Helix. It's true. I mean... Helix is like amazing. Everybody's like, these are the best mattresses I've ever like experienced in my life. I'm telling you, Helix is great. All you do is you take a quiz to find out what kind of sleeper you are, what things are important to you in a mattress. And your personalized mattress is shipped straight to your door free of charge. Helix knows there's no better way to test out a new mattress than by sleeping on it in your own home. That's why they offer a 100-night trial and 10 to 15-year warranty to try out your new Helix mattress. Everybody is unique and everyone sleeps differently. That's why Helix has several different mattress models to choose from, each designed for specific sleep positions and feet preferences. Models with memory foam layers to provide optimal pressure, relief if you sleep on your side. Models with more responsive foam to cradle your body for essential support in stomach and back sleeping positions. No matter what you are or how you sleep, Helix, they're with you. You just got to fill out the quiz. It takes a second. It's a split second. You do the quiz. It's the easiest quiz in the world. You just, you know, they ask you a few questions about your genealogy, your lineage, you know, like where your family comes from, what countries they come from, and they try to put a composite together. You know, it's... Kidding! <laughs> And their mattresses are fiberglass free. They do not contain fiberglass, which can be harmful to your health. No fiberglass in the mattress. All these other brands, they got fiberglass there. No, none of that now. Stop it. Helix is offering 20% off all mattress orders and two free pillows for our listeners. Go to helixsleep.com slash Tim D. Use code helixpartner20. That's helixsleep.com slash Tim D. And use code helixpartner20. This is their best offer yet, and it won't last long. With Helix, better sleep starts now. One of our favorite themes on the show now is reading articles from the Wall Street Journal. I don't know what's going on there, and I, I don't know anyone there. The Wall Street Journal seems to be the head publication. Uh, it's appointed itself the publication that is trying uh, the hardest to prepare you for the nightmares of which they are convinced you are going to experience. <laughs> the Wall Street Journal has a new article called Here's What It's Like to Retire on Almost Nothing But Social Security. Listen again to the words because they're my favorite. There is a woman here in a subdivision, maybe Gilbert Goons, <laughs> and she's in a wheelchair and she's got a dog and she's smiling. Here's the Wall Street Journal headline again. It's great. Here's what it's like to re retire on almost nothing but Social Security. Four retirees with limited incomes open up about how they make it work. Many Americans reach retirement with almost no savings, no 401k, few investments, and almost no income aside from a monthly Social Security check. Social Security was never fully intended to support retirees, said Anqui Chen, Assistant Director of Savings Research at Boston College's Center for Retirement Research. The average monthly Social Security check is about 1900 That doesn't go as far as it once did, said Sandy Markwood, CEO of U.S. Aging. 
adding that inflation and rising rents have led more older adults to seek help from her nonprofit's elder care locator tool and other organizations that provide help to seniors. So here's what, and I haven't read the article yet, but here's what I'm betting it is. They're not going to present this as a desperate situation for these seniors. They're going to present this as like a fun challenge. It's like a fun late in life challenge to figure out how you're going to eat. Eric Miller never wanted to leave the kitchen. The professional chef thrived on the intensity of restaurant life, often working 12 hour days, six to seven days a week. A heart condition landed him in the hospital about seven years ago. After that, he had no choice but to hang up his knives. Now 70, Miller said he was unprepared for sudden retirement, financially or otherwise, in part because he had never planned to stop working. At the height of his career, he earned about $2,000 a week. Now his monthly Social Security check brings in about $1,400. He rents the basement of his sister's home for about $500 a month, including electricity. His other main expenses include food, gas, and insurance. His six heart medications are largely covered by social services. About seven years ago, he moved to Arizona to care for his aging mother as her dementia and Alzheimer's worsened. When she had a stroke, he took a nearly two-year career break to help care for her full-time until she died. He eventually moved back to Virginia, where he worked for a few more years. Though money is tighter than he would like, Miller is proudly debt-free. So now here's where it turns. Here's where, now, now remember... <laughs> Remember, he's cared for his aging mother. He's living in a basement. He's living in a basement of his sister's house, okay, for 500 a month. But here's where the Wall Street Journal, here we go. Put on a happy face. The money is tighter than he would like. Miller, and by the way, people say, like, they're like, are you making up these articles? These are, you read them. <laughs> you go and read them. We'll post them. Remember, do you think I could make that up where they're like, you don't need a bathroom? Mm -hmm. What is this, 1998? Dining room? Kitchen? No, the new houses are a single hallway with little cages on either side. <laughs> he paid off, more, though money is tighter than he would like, Miller is proudly debt-free. He paid off more than 12000 in credit card debt this summer with the help of nonprofit financial counseling agency Green Path Financial Wellness. He also got relief from his roughly 100000 in medical bills uh, for his four heart procedures, thanks to the hospital's charity. I feel a lot less stressed. <laughs> in retirement, he embraced budgeting for the first time. That's that, See, that, what that basically says is he was a scumbag. That little line is important. <laughs> in retirement, he embraced budgeting for the first time. So basically, they're saying, this guy's a scumbag. Now, they told you a few paragraphs earlier that he literally stopped his life to care for his aging mother. But now they're saying, but he was a scumbag. He didn't budget anything. He didn't know where his money was. He was a scumbag. You know, you know he was just taking care of his elderly mother with dementia, but he wasn't watching the money. <laughs> I work on my... Budget religiously, he said. Sounds fun. <laughs> he regularly tracks his spending in a spreadsheet. Woo! Some month he has about $150 left over, which usually buys him more food than he particularly likes, such as chicken and vegetables. I mean, the lives they are preparing you for. I'm, I'm, folks, listen to me right now. The former high school athlete enjoys watching football and basketball on television. His dog died last year, but he is considering getting a new one. I'll probably go to the pound, he said. The lives they are preparing you for are, are unbelievable. They are unreal. They are basically writing these articles to go, things are going to be okay. There'll be some financial uh, help perhaps delivered through charity or certain organizations and you might get that, you might not, but you better budget. You better budget because you can have about $150 left at the end of the month and you could have some chicken. <laughs> you could get some extra chicken. You want some extra chicken? And maybe you can get a dog and feed him some of the chicken. <laughs> Kathy Rode has been an advocate for people with disabilities her entire adult life. The retired social worker still helps friends with age related mobility problems. Seniors are generally embarrassed by disability. It takes confidence to say, I have this disability and it's within my right 
to seek accommodations. Afflicted with polio as an infant, Rote knows the challenges and expenses of life with a disability. Today, she lives on a thousand forty dollars Social Security check. Thousand, thousand. As a child, she used leg braces and Canadian canes to get around and recounts being bullied in school. The obstacles she encountered inspire her to work for years as an, at a nonprofit in Berkeley, California. She used the motorized wheelchair. Da 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 da. 1993, she lacked the stamina to work full time and claimed Social Security disability insurance. At around age 66, those benefits stopped and she began getting retirement benefits. She moved to Tucson, Arizona, where she's attended college. A folk singer and a guitarist, she rejoined a group that uh, had started the Tucson Folk Festival years before. Well, that's nice. The whole point of this is that it's actually good. She's good. We're all happy. Mm -hmm. She gets a thousand a month and she's happy. And if, if she, maybe she could eat her guitar. She bought a home with the 60000 her uncle left her and has no debt. She shares the home with Archie, her 90-pound rescue dog. She supplements the 200 she spends on food each month with a, a $157 benefit from her Medicare, which she uses to pay for over-the-counter medication and groceries. Hiring attendants to help with house cleaning, wheelchair maintenance, and food prep costs cost her about $300 a month. Rote said the recent deaths of her mother and five friends have convinced her to make the effort to see people. So she hosts occasional parties on her patio. See, it's fine. <laughs> She's having parties on the patio. We sing songs and eat some food and talk about what really matters to each of us. Yeah. Joyce McKinney, she's 77. She doesn't have any money either. Let's see how Joyce McKinney's doing. Okay. It's really, really tough. You don't know what the future is going to bring. It was an extremely difficult time. She's lonely, anxious with money. Uh, since, okay, now she feels a bit more secure, though far from flush. She had found ways to stretch her $1,800 Social Security check. Since downsizing, she pays about $343 a month for a storage unit. Her rent rose recently to $584 a month. She spends $68 a month for basic cable and $77 for her cell phone. An insurance policy costs her $269 a month. About $150 to $200 each month goes to food and $100 for laundry. She takes subsidized senior transportation for, for a dollar a ride to get to most places. McKinney is active in the social scene at the senior center where she spends most of her weekdays. Arriving at the Allegheny branch of the Philadelphia Senior Center around 9 a.m. and catching up with friends over free coffee and a dollar corn muffin. A dollar corn muffin. They bang her a dollar to have a corn muffin at the Senior Center. Many of the people here are like an extended family. They make better food for me than I make for myself. This is a great one. Barbara Talisman's nomadic lifestyle satisfies both her wanderlust and retirement budget. With limited savings, the former fundraiser for nonprofits had planned to work until at least age 65. But two years ago, with her birthday uh, approaching, she chose to call it quits, sell her belongings, and claim Social Security. Life is short. I was done. I wasn't going to wait another three years. Good for her. Okay. Now she puts some money into savings. Okay. Now she goes globe trotting. She booked four week-long back-to-back cruises to Mexico in the fall of 2021 when prices were low dirt due to lingering COVID concerns. So that's nice. So during a global pandemic, this woman was forced to take back-to-back -back cruises. It's not bad. Um, lovely. Travel, travel, yeah. Travel, travel, travel. Things are fine. She doesn't have a lot of money, but she's traveling. She's on a cruise. She, I think, you know, she has a small... Wait, hold on. Let's go up there for a second. Where does she live? Her food average is three hundred a month, and car insurance. Added up. Recently, she spent seven months in California, spending about five hundred a month on hotels between house sitting gigs. So she's a house sitter. She doesn't really have a permanent place to live, but it's fun. It's actually fun because she gets to house sit in other people's homes. That's nice. It's a fun way to do it. She house sits, and you know, it's great because you know, listen. We're not going to, nobody's trying to help any of these people. Nobody's trying to help any of these people. Nobody's trying to help any of these, certainly the people of Skull and Bones are not. <laughs> They're not trying to help any of these people. So you just got to put a nice 
put a good spin out on what they're doing. If they're house sitting or they have to live on a cruise or, you know, they just, you know, a lot of these, by the way, are just like, and she has a dog. Mm -hmm. That's a lot. A lot of them are like, she may have no money. She may be stretched to the limit where she has a hundred dollars a month left, but she's got a dog. And isn't that good? She went to the pound and got a dog and the other guy can occasionally eat more chicken. So the Wall Street Journal's like, things are good. Things are fine. Things are absolutely fine. People are eating chicken. They got dogs. They're house sitting in other people's houses. They're dying in hotels and on cruises. That's fine. It's fine. What are you going to do? What are you going to do? Help them? What are you going to put together some type of, uh, you know, program so that these people, ah, come on. It's fun. It's a fun challenge. It's fun to house sit when you're in your 70s. It's nice. It's fun to bounce around. House sitting. That's great. You should be how lucky to be so bohemian in your old age. How lucky to be so bohemian in your old age. Or live with your sister for 500 and finally learn the budget, you scumbag. Thank God you learned. Get that spreadsheet out, you scumbag. You were just trying to help your mother with dementia. Well, you should have had that spreadsheet then. Where was the spreadsheet then? You wouldn't be here, you piece of shit. I tried to get tickets to the Eras tour with Taylor Swift, and I couldn't. And my entire family wanted to go with me. And I promised them that I would get tickets. And literally, it was sold out, and I couldn't get the tickets. And do you know what my entire family did? And I don't even want to say this, because it's not right. My uncle, when I told him that I cannot get you and your children tickets to the Eras tour, my uncle put all of his, his wife and his children in a car. And he drove them into a lake, and they all died. And they were listening to Taylor Swift because he said, this is as close as we're going to get. This is as close as we're going to get. And I don't want you to have that. I don't want you to have that story to tell in your life. So I would like you to use the Game Time app. It's the best you can get tickets to anything, comedy, music, sports, last-minute tickets, flash deals, zone deals. Easy to find and buy tickets for every kind of event in your area. Views from all seats in the venue, lowest price guarantee, event cancellation, protection, job loss, protection, etc. Game time has deals on tickets right up to the start of the event and even after uh, it's an hour after it starts even. It's a place to find last-minute seats. Find exclusive flash deals and sponsored deals on tickets for football, basketball, Baseball, concerts, comedy theater, and more. With zone deals, you pick the section, and Game Time picks the seats for big time savings. The game here is it's not only easy to do, but it saves you money. The Game Time guarantee means you'll always get the best price. If you find tickets in the same section and row for less, Game Time will credit you 110% of the difference. And your family will not be in a car in a lake drowning. Screaming at me on the phone. Screaming at me going, oh, you couldn't do it. Wait till you see what I'm going to do now. And they're in the background, they're going, dad, no, no, stop. <laughs> and, and he's blasting, it's a love story. Like a sick <laughs> person. It's a love story. And he swam away and got out. He, and me and him are fine now. Download the Game Time app. Create an account and use code TIM for 20% off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code TIM for 20% off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest prices, guaranteed. We're ending with a sad story. A speeding driver strikes and kills girl six while she played outside her house and mockingly called her a retard to cops who arrived to investigate. That's not great. A North Carolina man struck and killed a six-year-old while speeding past her house and called her a retard to cops who arrived on the scene. Andrew Everett was charged with involuntary manslaughter, reckless driving, and speeding for the December 29th crash that killed uh, six-year-old Jocelyn Perez Hernandez. Hernandez's family said she was playing near the sidewalk in front of her home in Cary just before noon, and the vehicle struck her. I think the girl had Down syndrome. Mm -hmm. According to the warrant, Everett said, quote, I'm not sure why this investigation is taking more than five minutes. It wasn't my fault. No one was watching her, and she just jumped out in front of me. That retard. 
It is unclear if the little girl was disabled. Well, it looks a bit, you know, it feels a bit, I mean, yeah, that guy. Yeah. Yeah, that guy is not going to deal with this uh, in a mature way. Everett claimed the child jumped out in front of him, but police noticed a lack of skid marks on the road suggests that he did not try to break. Oh, my God. So maybe he wasn't paying attention. Maybe he's just a psycho. This girl died. That's a terrible story. Terrible. Mm-hmm. All around. There's something amazing about uh, someone who's just after something like that, completely remorseless. Yeah. Like someone who's like angry and like put upon going, what is, so what? Why is this even happening? Mm -hmm. This should take five minutes. So what? I mean, just the remorseless, the lack of remorse is always a fascinating element to me of certain people's makeup. That they can do something, even by accident, that causes a death. And they just go, yeah, well, I didn't mean to. They go, yeah, but you don't think about it. You know? Mm-hmm. I don't know. There's a, lot, there's a lot of people that just don't, they don't seem to have a lot of remorse. Not all of them. Obviously, there's people out there that are very deeply in touch with their humanity and, you know... But there's, there are people out there that maybe shoot a cinematographer instead of a movie and aren't, they don't seem broken up about it. But maybe that's just the way you need to move on. Mm-hmm. That's the other thing. Maybe you just need to move on. Like maybe you can't dwell on someone you shot several minutes ago or someone you hit with a car, you know, a half hour ago. Maybe you have, you know, we have to move on as people. It does us no good to dwell on the past. So are these people remorseless or are they forward thinking? <laughs> that's a, that's true because there are a lot of people. Our buddy, Hi, baby. Our buddy Caitlin had an accident in Malibu. Did it sideline her? I don't know. I I think, and that. But by the way, that's the attitude that makes a champion. That's really the attitude that makes a champion. She's like, I don't think she meant to do it. I think circumstances being what they were. Unfortunately, she ended somebody's life. In her vehicle. But. You know. The term onward and upward. Exists for a reason. (laughs) It's not. I mean I didn't just invent it. It's actually a thing that people say. Onward and upward. I auditioned for a movie recently. I didn't get it. And yet still. My manager said onward and upward. We actually just went next. But I wish he said onward and upward. Mm -hmm. He just went next, which is maybe what Caitlin said, next. Maybe she was like, next. Or maybe this guy was just next. Or our buddy Alec Baldwin maybe was like, next. I don't know. I don't know. I am not a genius. We know, Tim. But I do have some insight into the human condition. And people often have to move on. They must move on. And, the, and, 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 and that, that really is an important part of life. And I think that, you know, this man, who this is a horrible thing that this girl died. It was, it was not nice that he called her a retard after hitting her with his car. But that is what he believed caused the accident. In fairness to him. And he's probably not a, an eloquent person. I look at him and I go, he's maybe not an eloquent, yeah, that is not an eloquent man. That is not a man who went to Yale. So that is not a man who, he's probably um, inarticulate. He doesn't exactly know how to express his emotions in a, in a, in a way that wouldn't offend. 
like saying, like if I were him, I would have said, this is a great tragedy. I'm so sorry she just jumped out of nowhere. Nobody was watching her. It seemed like something maybe was wrong with her. I wouldn't have said, why is this taking more than five minutes? That retard jumped out. I wouldn't have said it. Those were his words, not mine. Those were his words, not mine. Um, but this is a man who understands the need to put the past behind him. You know? And there's many, and by the way, how different is he than uh, Bill Clinton? Not too different. Bill Clinton's like, let's say, hey, let's leave it there. Let's leave the past there. Onward and upward. Let's move on. You think Bill Clinton wants a, a real examination of the pit? No, America's best days are ahead of her. It's time to move on. That's why he brought the Newsom's to Mexico, to talk about the future. That's what they were discussing, not the past. Talk about the future and what it will bring and all the good things that are going to come. You know? And that's what this guy was doing in his own way with his little shitty car on a side street, driving a little fast, killing this poor girl. Nothing good about any of that. But he was just doing what Bill Clinton was doing. Life's a weird, random place. This guy's going, let's move on. Clinton's in a, a luxury resort in Mexico, essentially saying the same thing. Let's move on. How many lives did Clinton ruin? More than that guy, probably. <laughs> right? Yeah. So it's just interesting. Random. Odd. But that's what, that's what we're doing here. Can't make sense of it. But if you want to see a comedy show, you should go to TimDillonComedy.com and get tickets to come see me. It'll make the night fun. Don't kill anyone on the way home. But if you do, that shouldn't, you know, inhibit you from going on and doing the things you normally do. Bethlehem, Pennsylvania, Washington, D.C., Northfield, Ohio, San Antonio, Texas, Dallas, Atlanta, St. Louis, Indianapolis, Boston, 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 another Boston probably. We're going to add a fourth show at the Wilbur. Connecticut, Foxwoods, Chicago, uh, Fort Lauderdale, Indio, Phoenix. A couple more casinos being announced too. We'll be keeping an eye on all the stories for you. Some Gilbert Goons updates on the Patreon. Interesting stuff happening. God, I wish I was in the fucking Mexico with the Gavin Newsom and the Clintons. I really wish I was there. But at the end of the day, it's like, God, it looks so fun. Gavin Newsom with his cutoff converses and his wife. <laughs> God, it looks so fun. Oh, poor Bill. Oh, here's the beach walk. It's unclear if... If former presidential candidate and ex-secretary of state Hillary Clinton was also at the resort. Oh, they left her home. Oh, how sad. Hillary's not much for parties. You know that's what Bill said. Hillary's like, I don't want to see them. Because <laughs> they're going to talk about how Gavin can become president. That's going to depress her. Mm -hmm. She's going to be depressed. So Bill's taking that walk on the beach. Bill's giving him the advice. He's the young gun. This is like the last time anyone's going to ask for Bill Clinton's advice. He's a fucking suspect in a human trafficking probe. <laughs> this is the last motherfucking time anyone is going to take a beach walk with Bill Clinton and go, hey, buddy, how do I do it? This is it. This is the last time Bill Clinton can be like in some type of elder statesman before he's just complete. Because th th this is the tip of the iceberg. What's going to come out about all this stuff I mean, it'll be terrible. His legacy is going to go down in literal flames. So this is the last time you can walk on a beach in Mexico and give this other scumbag advice about how to bamboozle everybody into thinking that this scumbag cares about them. And there's something nice about that. There's something nice about that. In a world that changes every minute, every second, when we can hold on to very, very, very little... There are some nice things that stay the same. And one of them is that somewhere on this planet, a sociopath will walk down to the resort or walk down the beach of a resort and tell another sociopath how to be a better sociopath. <laughs> okay? And neither one of them needed to be in fucking faggoty skull and bones. 